Okay. Go on there. Yes, bro. What's going on, guys? We can start this in just a bit. Give me a second here. Give me a second here, guys. What's up, guys? We're going to start this call here in just a bit. We're going to give it a couple minutes here in just a bit.
What's up, guys? We're gonna start this call here in just a couple minutes. In a couple minutes. All right, give me a favor, guys. Give me a favor. Drop where you're tuning in from. Drop where you're tuning in from, guys. Drop where you're tuning in from. Do me a favor and drop where you're tuning in from, and we'll get this thing started here in a bit. We're going to start this call in like 60 seconds, guys. Give me like 60 seconds. Don't want to watch it. All right, guys, we're going to start this call. What's going on, everybody? Do me a huge favor here. Actually, I just unlocked the chat right now. Drop some 777s in the chat box. Drop some 777s in the chat box. Uh, if you guys are fired up, if you are excited, okay, drop some 777s in the chat box. And we're going to get this whole thing here rocking and going, okay? So amazing, amazing, amazing. We've got people tuning in from everywhere. South Carolina, Florida, Australia, AZ, Miami, okay, movement is worldwide, so, all right, I'm going to mute the chat, we have Callie here, uh, I'm going to mute the chat here now, so we can get straight into it, so, okay, guys, first things first, before we go in-depth with the alts, uh, just so I don't do you guys a uh, complete disservice, I want to be able to show y'all really kind of like what overall is happening in the market here uh what i'm seeing and to be honest give me one second guys i'm gonna plot my whole fucking screen for some reason one second all right guys 
Yeah, we're going to go over the whole market today. So give me a second. I don't know why this thing just did some weird, weird shit right now. Okay, cool. So first things first, before we look at Bitcoin, okay, and before we look at really anything else, um, I'm going to go over first. So the first 10 minutes of this call is going to be dedicated to uh, really kind of some fundamentals and technicals on like, let's say some of the bigger uh, movers of Bitcoin or the movers of crypto, like let's say Bitcoin and DXY, and really what's going on in the overall US economy, because obviously we don't want to be buying um, in a potential bear market that could, we could be heading towards, uh, not bear market, but at least a nasty pullback that I see happening on a fundamental level, especially uh, with this week. So it might give you guys some good like buying opportunities. So we're going to go over that first. Then we're going to, what we're going to go over is this is the agenda. We're going to go over some setups, some crypto plays, some crypto exits, how I exit the market. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the future of the markets and I'll go over certain trades that helped me make 100K in the last two weeks. I mean, it's just 100K, guys. I've had 250K days trading in crypto and I'll break down to you guys how I did that and what we had to do in order to do that because um, I'm not scared to share it. I really just don't give a... I really don't care, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and then after that, I'm going to bring up one of my special guests here who is an absolute beast when it comes to the fundamental of the entire cryptocurrency space, when it comes to researching liquidity pools, okay, understanding just on a, I would say, sentimental and fundamental aspect, the research behind crypto. Um, and then we're going to go from there. So this is going to be filled with value here. Okay, I would suggest take notes. Am I recording this? Probably not. Uh, but I probably should be. Uh, I think I am actually. Okay, cool. So let's go straight into it. Okay, long story short, what I'm looking at with DXY here. Okay, I'm seeing DXY uh, moving a little bit higher, to be honest. Uh, now that it broke this zone, this is what I was a little worried about earlier. I could see it go to this order block here or a specific area that I would probably target would be this order block or uh, potentially, uh, yeah, this order block seems seems decent that I could see okay, price head towards next. Now we could see some rejection here, right? Because we have some imbalances here that have already kind of been filled. Okay, we do have some imbalances here that haven't yet. So I could target around this area here for DXY. What does this mean? Why do we care or why should we give a shit about DXY? Excuse my language. The reason being is because overall, my market thesis and viewpoint on DXY is that we're going below 99. Okay, in the short term, I think I wholeheartedly believe we're going here at 101. If we go to 101 here, dollar index, and the dollar index goes here, everything's going to go up, guys. We're going to see gold create even higher highs. We're going to see Bitcoin create higher highs. We're going to see naturally all the liquidity entering into the Bitcoin market and the total market cap of cryptocurrency going up and up and up. Naturally, that's just going to pour into all, okay, of these other different types of cryptos. And obviously with Forex, you're going to see opposing pairs go up in value just because of that, okay? Now, what can what can stop this, okay, if we have a rug pull that happens in the market, okay? And I'm going to talk about that possibility because I'm trying to make sure that you guys are safe and you're not stupid, okay, with some of these gains because some of you guys that have been following me already are up. 150% are up 200% are up. Okay. 700%. Some of you guys are up. Okay. 50%. So I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that you guys, okay. Are not in greedy euphoria right now, because last time I was in greedy euphoria, I lost half a million, half a million dollars in a shitty coin that I invested in. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure that you guys are not in that euphoria. You think you're a badass just because, Hey, look, you made 200%, 150% on one coin. Okay, you think you're going to get rich off of this next bull run. Okay, it's going to happen probably, but you just got to be patient and be aware of what's happening right now in the market. So I see obviously price potentially heading up to here next. If not, I could see it. I could see it potentially drop in this area here. Okay, if we see a good rejection with DXY in this area and then a potential drop, we could see one more movement to the downside here. Okay, and if we do see that movement to the downside, Okay, I would probably most likely see uh, see it go to at least at least the 101, 101 three area. I, I would say this wave, because I trade Elliott wave, okay, would most likely head downward here, okay? We would most likely see some sort of swipe of liquidity 
okay, to this side here, okay, and probably either bounce off this order block here or bounce off this, okay, institutional candle there. Very, very simple. This is what I see happening with DXY. Now, if we get rug pulled, and I'm going to tell you guys what's going to happen if we get rug pulled, okay, because that is a possibility. Inflation keeps going higher. Remember this, okay, guys? And if inflation goes higher, and this is really the pull up here, okay, and we break this structure, we're going to most likely fill this order here at 105, 105, 900, and 105, 495. And if that happens, guys, we're most likely going to see Bitcoin drop, okay, back to these lows here, okay? Probably back to 60. Um, potentially, if we have a break of that, uh, we could even go back to 57K. And that would just cause, obviously, um, if you see on Bitcoin there, okay, easily another 9 to 10% drop uh, or potentially a 16% drop. Now, if that happens, and usually stuff like that tends to happen before the halving, just be aware that if you see a 10% drop on Bitcoin, you're going to see, okay, 20 to 30% drops on alts. Okay, because alts are just degenerate gains. You get degenerate gains, but you also get degenerate massive drawdown. Okay, or you get massive pullbacks in it. So I'm just going to keep you guys aware of that because uh, I'm trying to keep you guys safe in this market, uh, especially so you don't end up a loser because 99% of people fail at trading. Um, and I don't want you guys to be losers. I want you guys to be winners. All right, so let's go back to what we were talking about with DXY. I could see it jump up here. Okay, mitigate this area and then tend to do its drop. And if we do see that drop and we do see a break of structure here below 103, 300, okay, if we see something like this, this is what I want to see. Okay, I am seeing Bitcoin going to all-time highs, okay, and breaking to probably 85K, okay? This is just what I see with DXY. If not, if we close above here, okay, we're most likely going to close above uh, 104 and head towards the 105 area. If that happens... Okay, get ready for some blood on the water. If you are holding crypto, get the fuck out. Okay, if you aren't holding anything, okay, amazing. You'll find some really good buying entries. I'm just giving you guys this news ahead of time because like I said, I'm looking at this in the long term here to head towards the one, 175 area. Like that's what I'm kind of looking at right now. Just specifically, okay, long term as another massive move or impulse move, I could see this, okay, go to, okay, on a run, if this is really the pullback, okay, 78, and like I was talking about, 78, almost 80, uh, 80K, and the full-blown extension. Okay, that would be my target area, okay, for this. That's what I'm looking at, okay? If this is really just the pullback, okay, I'm giving you guys both scenarios. And the reason being is because anybody that doesn't give you both scenarios and tells you they know where the absolute market's going, okay, is an idiot. Whoever doesn't give you both scenarios and gives you one bullish or bearish scenario, okay, is not, it, it, it's just giving you a bias. I'm giving you two different examples of what happens. We close below this area here on 65, expect Bitcoin to drop below this area and swipe these lows 100%. But as long as we don't close here, and even if we make this low, we don't close below this low this week, hey, guys, I'm seeing all-time highs hitting this week. Okay? Amazing. What would I do? I would start looking for buys. Uh, I'd want to see this swipe this high. Okay? I'd want to see something like this. I'd want to see Bitcoin break this area, come back for a correction, okay? Mitigation, and then I would set up, set up a buy order to, to long Bitcoin because I could see it go to 77K. Okay? With ETH. What am I seeing next with ETH? I'm bullish on ETH, yes. Okay, only if, like I said, we, we didn't break this structure here. We mitigated it perfectly. Okay, I am still in this trade. I am bullish on ETH. Okay, am I selling all my ETH? Absolutely, because I don't think Ethereum is going to win this round. Okay, I really think that Ethereum is going to lose, okay, to Solana. And we're going to talk about why that's going to happen. Okay, we've been talking about that for a while now. Uh, I know in January, I was telling everybody, hey, look, I think the technology in Ethereum is broken. And the next update that's going to be happening on, happening on ETH is going to be in 2027. Okay, the upgrade, long story short, basically failed. Okay, Ethereum cannot be user-friendly. It is Its technology is, is freaking ancient. It's like us using the BlackBerry in 2024. You're not going to see that happen. Okay, and because the next updates in 2027, and it took them almost, 
however many years to even do the last update, which was, okay, a couple of days ago. Okay, I see Ethereum not lasting. Okay, not and not to say like not lasting, you know, obviously there's like an ETF, but when it comes to day-to-day -day transactions, like if I was in a grocery store today, okay, and I was to pay for like, let's say a, a loaf of bread, I wouldn't pay for it in Ethereum because, okay, 15 bucks per, it, it just, the rate at which I'd be able to obviously transact that transaction would be so low, okay? And the fees are just ridiculous. And the technology, and, and honestly, the, the user-friendly base of it is just out of this world ancient. It looks like Nintendo 1996. That's just really the reality of it. So it, it just doesn't work. And yes, the ETF might obviously push price to the upside. And obviously last week or two weeks ago, I was talking to you guys about how ETH would go to like 4,000 because of um, the news that's happening on March 13th. And then I said it was going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event. And what happened? That, that happened exactly. I think ETH has maybe a double in this bull run. I don't see ETH going above seven or $8,000 in this bull run. So if you're looking for a 100% gain maybe on in the next six to 12 months, okay, dump your money in ETH. If you're a crypto degenerate like me and some of my other friends, you're probably not going to dump it in ETH. You're going to probably dump it in layer twos and all the crypto crazy layer threes under Solana. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but reality, I still see ETH going back up to 4,300 and creating all-time highs here. As long as this is, okay, the pullback. If this isn't the pullback here, ETH has uh, a ways down to go. And I, I honestly purely can think that it could go sweep this liquidity here and go back to 3,000, 3,100 easily top that area. Okay, that is in a bearish scenario. Okay, I'm giving you guys both scenarios. What's happening with DOT? Okay, I got out of DOT already. Okay, I told everybody that our profit zone was going to be $11 here because it was a mitigation of this candle that happened here to the left. Okay, we swept liquidity to the high, which is exactly what it did. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys this. If you're trading DOT, as long as if we close above 11.78, Okay, polka dot is going 100% to 14 bucks. So you do what you want with that information. If we we have a closing candle here and it's a bullish closing candle, like very green bullish, at least a solid like I would say like at least 1 or 2% above 1178, okay? We are going to 14 bucks. So it's a guaranteed, I, I don't want to say guaranteed because I, I don't want to be responsible for whatever you guys do, but it's a guarantee, at least in my perspective, 20% gain because nothing's stopping dot here. Nothing's going to stop it. Once it breaks through that, this 1178, I mean, you might see some resistance. Let me see it here, guys. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. So if I'm talking too fast, I'm sorry. Um, I have very low patience. You might see resistance here around 1358. Like you will probably Let's see. You will see some resistance here in this area. But to be honest, not really. Like this area here, for sure. But to be honest, nothing's stopping it from that breakout once we close above 1178. So, like I said, uh, for me, at least it's a comfortable. Okay, 25% gain. If I see dot close above here and then do a nice solid pullback, okay, I would hold up until there. That's what I'm doing with polka dot. Okay, somebody asked me that. Why am I also looking at dot? We're still in the second wave of dot. Uh, of dot. Like I said, I'm an Elliott wave trader. So I look for the first pullback, second wave, pullback, third wave. Third wave extension would be exactly what I'm looking at right now. Would be that 13 probably... 1364 and confluence here. So, I mean, this is what I'm looking at. Okay. Long term, this is what it would be like if I was positive, if I was bullish. Okay. If I was bullish, this is what I'm looking at right here. Okay. Mitigation of candle wear. That's what I'm looking at. Now, if this thing decides to break, like I said, if, if Bitcoin starts to break downward, I'm not even taking this trade. I'm getting the hell out. Okay, let's look at AVAX, my favorite trade, okay? 
Uh, one of my favorite pairs. What did we have? We had impulse correction, impulse correction. Then we had, okay, our final third impulse move and reaccumulation. Okay, with that reaccumulation, what it did was last week I told everybody, hey, look, what we're looking for, let me delete this so it's not that ugly, okay? Uh, I told everybody, hey, look, we're gonna look for some bullish movement here. What happened? Okay, AVAX decided to give us that bullish movement. Okay, we went to this zone here. And now we broke above this. I have notes here that if we close above, okay, 67 bucks, we're a hundred percent going to six. I mean, 60 as $59 or hundred percent going to 67. And we just barely tapped it there. Um, to be honest, if we close above this area, it's a mitigation area. We're going to 77. So you do what you want with that information. Would I buy AVAX? No. Um, I gave buys in AVAX here at 34. I gave buys at 49. If it gets back to this area, maybe. But guys, when the train is left, I'm not going to try to keep waiting for a train that's never going to come. Uh, I mean, if you were on my calls the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about buying for a very long time. Uh, and you got paid. If you didn't, hey, look, you didn't get paid. It is what it is. Ripple, I'm about to sell all my Ripple positions. Um, I said that we would see third waves here, then potentially if we break this zone, okay, we could he head to 78, 79. I'm about to sell all of my Ripple position. Um, to be honest, I'm probably going to be out. I don't think Ripple will even go to the, and this is going to sound nuts to some of you guys, but I really do not even think we're going to go to the 2021 high with Ripple. In this in this cycle, I just don't see it happening. I see Ripple possibly going to like a dollar thirty five cents, maybe a dollar and sixty cents, but I don't see it going past almost the two bucks. I don't see that happening in this cycle. Notice that in each and every single cycle, the Ripple, the Ripple hype is dying. You see, yes, I understand it's fast. Yes, I I understand that they won the SEC case, but. I'm looking for crazy gains here. And look at what's happened with Solana going above 100%, Jupiter going 150%. I mean, since that same run, you know, obviously Ripple, yeah, has gone up. Oh my God, I'm sorry, guys. Yes, Ripple has done its move, okay? Like we've called it, but it's nowhere near the amount of hype, like 30, 30 something percent. It's nowhere near some of our Solana moves and some of our Jupiter moves, it's, it's, I mean, I mean, not, oh, what am I looking at? Some of the Jupiter moves that have been happening. Okay. Look at this. You know what I mean? From, from entry guys, this is where I was telling everybody to buy, you know, here, you know, 180%. Come on. You know what I mean? Guys, it, it's, it's nowhere near. I would say, so I'm, I'm out of XRP. If you guys want to hold it, great. Right? It has great utility for banks. Um, you know, it's just not, I don't see it popping in the cycle. And this is another point I was going to bring up was in every single, because this is my third cycle. So I made money in in, in the 20, 2016 bull run. It went from, I think I had like three or 4K. And it grew to about 50K. At the peak, it was like 50K with three or $4,000. And then in the 2020, 2021 bull run, I took like 200K to like 1.2 million. And then I started losing a bunch of shit, putting it in stupid projects like meme points and all this dumb shit, okay? So what is my goal here? Well, it's to obviously up what I did in 2020. Um, so what I want to give you guys is my advice in 2020, in 2016, okay, in 2017, the run was really built on alts, okay, if you see the biggest runs that happened or the, the craziest returns, because I, I care about the returns, that I, you know, I, I, I understand the technology is great, the technology is cool, okay, um, I believe in the tech too. Everybody has good tech though in, in a bull market. You know what I mean? Like I'm just over the bullshit of like, this is revolutionary. And like, unless it is legitimately having an impact on the market, um, everybody just kind of sells garbage. 
And that's what happened in 2020 and 2021 with like gaming. And I would say the biggest things that popped off was the BNB and uh, I would say ETH layer twos. What I see happening now is in 2024 or 2023 to 2024, because I think this bull market's only going to run till 2024 and it's done. After this year, I'm out. I'm taking all my profits. Okay. Uh, this year, it's going to be soul layer twos. Okay. It's going to be soul layer twos. And I think it's going to be gaming again, like metaverse and AI, more importantly. Look at what's happening happening to NVIDIA stock. NVIDIA stock right now has gone up like, what, a thousand percent? Um, not really, but like 800%. And the reason being is because it's AI. Now, right now in the stock market, any company that says that or mentioning that they have AI being incorporated into their company is just going up. Right now, the AI craze is huge. AI is bigger than what Metaverse was, I would say, a couple a couple years ago. Because the Metaverse coins, I remember Sandbox, um, we made like a 10x on that. Um, I made like a 100 <laughs> I'll never forget, I made a hundred grand off Sandbox, just dumping 10 grand into it. It was stupid. Like the generate shit that happened and we were making dumb money because everything was just hype. Okay. Everything was like all that. And I'll be honest with you guys, you want to be, you want to be afraid when that kind of hype starts to kick in. I don't think we're there yet, but when it does and everybody's, when your grandma starts talking to you about crypto, okay, that's when you need to start selling. All right. So let's go back, XRP. Solana, okay, Solana's market cap is already outweighed, okay, where it's at currently right now. We said yesterday that, or we said last week on Friday that it would go to probably 200 bucks. Where is the next area to Solana to go to? Okay, Solana is probably going to head to here. Okay, could we see a pullback? Absolutely. I'm looking for a pullback on Sol. Okay, I'm looking at that. Now, what area can I see a potential pullback? Uh, right now, it's going to be really difficult because you have a lot of people trying to buy, but I would want to see something like this. I'd want to see Seoul come here, okay? Come into this area and then push to this upside right here. Perfect. I said, if we break 200, we're going to 230 to 244. Uh, I'm still a believer in that. We've solid that we've had solid breaks above this mitigation area. There's a bunch of imbalances here. Nothing's going to stop it. I think Seoul is going to pull back here and then probably dump or go to 2030 to 2044. I'm positive we're going to hit 2044, but I think it's going to look like this first. And then we get there. Okay. So that's my prediction on Solana. Okay. If you guys, whatever you want to do with that, do whatever you want with that information. Okay, I'm actually going to probably most likely more than trade this buy here. That's only if Bitcoin doesn't close below. If Bitcoin does close below, I'll set the order. If it doesn't, then I'm not getting in this. Um, like I said, the market's kind of ran by Bitcoin, but actually it isn't. Bit, uh, you know, Seoul is up still while Bitcoin's going down, okay, or still in that area of decision. I mean, dude, Seoul's just been going up all day, like all, all week, really. And, and, and look at... The, look at the soul chart and then look at the Bitcoin chart. You know what I mean? It looks like a completely different Bitcoin looks like it's about to turn around and soul looks like it's already, it's still running up. You know, it looks like it still wants to go to this area. Jupiter. Okay. I mean, what do I say about Jupiter? We called it at 53 cents. We called it at 49 cents. We called it all in, in this entire area of accumulation uh, I, I I did a picture on Instagram showing, hey, look, Uniswap, okay, Pancake Swap, what it looked like, okay. I think Juke long term, just in terms of market cap, okay. If you do the math, uh, me and Bobby were talking about it earlier, and I'm gonna introduce him here, and he'll kind of break down some of the stuff. It's a simple six x if you compare it to the market cap of Uniswap, okay. Very simple. All you gotta do is do the math. Uh, if you have the C equal amount of market cap that is inside Uniswap, okay? And if we really do believe Solana is going to go, okay, above Ethereum, all the money from Ethereum and probably most, most of Bitcoin too is going to start pouring into the Solana network, okay? And if you see that, it's going to also pour into Jupiter. It's going to pour into, which is a newer coin, okay? Which is a newer coin. And I think it'll break its all-time high of $2. Now, what do I think? 
Um, right now, Jupiter's market cap is at, okay, 1.8 billion, right? 1.8 billion. If this goes, let's just do some simple math here. Let me whip out the calculator, okay? But if this goes to the same Uniswap market cap, I mean, guys, let's look at what that is, right? Let's look at 8, 8.991. 460. Okay. I didn't, I'm not good at math. I'm not good at math, guys. So if, if I'm on here and I make a mistake, sorry. This is what I'm going to do because I can't, I can't stand this right now. This is what I'm going to do. Divided by my calculators pissing me off. Okay, let's go back to Jew. Already a little Jupy Jew. Okay, perfect. This is what we're gonna do. Okay, four point eight six. So we're at four point eight six. You still have a four point four point eight x on Jupiter potentially if we if it hits that market cap. Okay, which I would say it's a comfortable three x from here. So uh Jupiter. Three to five dollar coin. Okay, long term. Would I start taking profits? This is another thing we we're going to mention here is profit taking. I've been taking profits on Jupe the entire way. And some of like the more degenerate co coins that we're going to talk a little later about, like um, you know, like Soul Chat and all this stuff. I've been taking profit on a lot of them. Like, guys, like Obviously, we're still in Soul Chat, but I've been taking profit on this. I know a lot of people were asking me about Soul Card. Uh, we're up; we were up two hundred percent, but I've been taking profit. I think I'm almost completely out of Soul Card, to be honest. Um, it's kicking back up again, but I mean, if you look at our entry in Soul Card, it's it's pretty stupid. Um, you know, obviously, this is a low market cap coin. This is a high risk coin. It has thirteen million. Okay, really. But we're we've been out kind of the so far for for a while. So, like I said, when we do crazy gains and crazy pushes, guys, because I remember you know with Soul Card we got in like right around this area. Okay, at one point we were up to two hundred something plus percent. Okay, when you're up that much, just understand that like there's certain I have certain rules. Like one once, once I'm up 30, 40 percent, I start taking. Okay at least 10 or 15% of my profits. Once I make a quick double in any degenerate cryptocurrency and just any nano caps or micro caps, like 13, like this right here, 13 million, this is so small, so small, like such a, such a small market cap. When, when we have something like that, okay, and you double your money, take out your initial or at least start taking things out. Like we did that with Seal with Pat, like and shout out to Bobby on that one because like, and I'm going to introduce him here too. But we ran like a, you know, we ran Seal with Pat up, and now it's obviously dropped down. We took all our profits, but I mean, we got in Seal with Pat like what was it, Bobby? Like right here in March. I didn't connect my wallet and actually check. I'm just I'm scared somebody's gonna try to hack me or something. So just understand, guys, that like in a lot of these smaller degenerate coins, once you're in profit, you're gonna want to take your profit. Um, that's just kind of how it is. We're going to talk about also mock dupe and what we're thinking mock dupe is going to do next. I'm still in mock dupe. I'm 15 grand in um, and I'm not selling. So it is what it is. Uh, but with also with Jupiter, just in general, it still has its ways to push. Where would I look for a buy entry? I would look for a buy entry here. Okay. I still think it can come back to this area and I would set a limit guys. I would use bird eye for a limit here. Um, this is where I think it can go. And then it'll probably extend to the upside. As long as it doesn't break past this, okay, and Bitcoin doesn't keep moving downward. If it does, then I'm going to be out. Okay. Uh, which coin should we buy now? Okay, cool. So, okay, guys, there's a lot of questions I'm getting hit with right now. I'm going to take your questions at the end. Okay, what am I looking at with sand? I'm looking at this being the pullback for sand for it to move forward. Okay, for it to move higher. My thing with sand. Uh, render, I mean, I'm in this, to be honest. It's 
and it's an AI token, it's an AI coin. And radium. Radium at its peak, I mean, was, I mean, you can see what radium was at its peak. It was like 17 bucks. So, I mean, now that we're breaking the structure here with radium, I would wait for a pullback, but the next take profit zone and area of radium would be somewhere here. Let me do this real quick. And then I'm gonna bring up my boy, Bobby, to kind of give you guys some fundamentals to close this thing off and uh, help some of you guys out. So radium, let's talk about this real quick. And we're gonna, we might give a point or two today just cause every, that's all you guys want, right? All you guys want is to, you don't give a shit about the technology, all you care about is money. And I get it, I get it. I'm kind of the same way sometimes, but it, it, you follow the tech and then you get the money, you know what I mean? All right, so look at this. As long as we break above this zone here, I think we're gonna swipe the liquidity here and comfortably, I see radium going easily to this area here, mitigating this over here, okay? Five bucks, five, and I mean, obviously you do what you want with that information. Where do I see a pullback on radium to get in? I see the pullback happening probably here. That's where I would comfortably enter. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But this is a, the safest bet is here. This is the safest bet. Because if we break this zone here, we're gonna move lower. That's just the reality. The safest bet is to buy between two points, th these areas here. Okay, do what you want with that information. That's where I would comfortably buy. Okay, if Bitcoin doesn't break, like I said, if Bitcoin breaks, this all is irrelevant. If Bitcoin breaks below, I would even say this zone here, it's gonna look a little ugly for Bitcoin. We could go lower, okay? Because realistically, I'm looking at Bitcoin being bearish to be honest, it's breaking structure. Look at this. Okay, and, and another thing I forgot to mention here, guys, is, okay, right now the outlook. Okay, right now the Fed tool is saying that we are, we still have a chance of having still five rate cuts by the end of the year. Okay, that's what the market is priced in. But just be aware that like this week, okay, we have a big week. It's going to be, at two o'clock on Wednesday is FOMC. And it's gonna be about economic projections and FOMC statement. If Jerome Powell says we are not gonna cut rates this year, it's gonna rug pull the whole fucking market. And that's my warning to you guys. Okay, be pay attention to what happens on Wednesday because it could rug pull the whole market. Just be aware of that. And I've seen it happen and I don't want you guys to get scared, but like I am just, we're, we're overbought on everything guys. And I, I, we're in, in need of a major correction here. So just be aware of that. And inflation keeps going up. I mean, dude, last week, CPI, CPI reports and PPI came out higher than expected. We went from 3.5 inflation to like 3.8. PPI came out higher and higher. Guys, inflation's coming back. And remember what I said on a fundamental level, if inflation's coming back and um, if inflation's coming back, jobs are still doing good and the economy is doing great in an inflation-fearing sentiment or market, okay, then the market's going to freaking drop, right? The market's going to drop. So if this right here comes out bearish for the DXY, um, just expect it, all markets to boom, but I most likely think this is going to be bullish for DXY, and I think a potential rug pull could happen this week uh, where we're announced, hey, look, uh, a potential we're, we're, we're going to keep rates the same but potentially this year, we're gonna keep rates longer the same than we expected. And then that's gonna drop markets like an insane amount. So just be aware of that on Wednesday, guys. Um, that's my only concern or my news. Um, next thing I'm going to go over, uh, I'm gonna pass it to my buddy. Uh, I'm gonna pass it to one of my really, really good friends here. Uh, you know, his name is Bobby Blockchain. Okay, on Instagram, he's one of my good friends. We've known each other for legitimately years. Um, and one of the good things about him, can you raise your hand, Bobby, real quick, is uh, since we've known each other for such a long time, one great, I'm gonna make you panelist, bro. One of the, I, I would say like we're a really great team because he's a beast when it comes to being able to research some of the fundamentals behind the entire space. We can kind of go back and forth on like, what we're looking at, uh, some of the technology behind it. And uh, 
he's just an absolute monster. I mean, this guy is in front of his computer all the time doing all the research. And then I go back, back and forth with him on some of the technicals. Um, so Bobby, take it away, bro. Talk about some of the fundamentals, if you can, of like Solana, what you're looking for in Solana, what you're looking for in Jupiter. Um, why, not just on a technical standpoint, is it going to go to a high rate? Um, or but or just a, why am I bullish? Yeah, on a fundamental level, why is it why is it bullish? So take it away, oh, bro. Can can I uh share my screen here? Yeah, go for it, bro. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right. So I'm gonna go right into it. But the one thing because I wanted to go right into Bitcoin, of course, because this could bring you into a time where it could potentially be the super cycle, which everyone always has actually been talking about this, but I wanted to reference gold because if you, you can look at what gold has done since when it, its inception of the ETF actually launched in 2004, you can see that till 2011, it essentially had a run up. So I wanted to precursor everything with this, right? So we go over to Bitcoin. This is where the ETF approval is, mind you, right? So we're, we're trying to reference these two things. This huge run up here, we see, okay. And then you're gonna reference over to Bitcoin, what can happen. But at the same time, now we can go in and say, okay, let's, let's look at the catalyst in play. Let's look at the fundamental. The key component is going to be the halving event, which everybody knows that is basic supply versus demand model. And there's a couple of differences in play here as well. So you're going from 900 units per day mined to 450. But I also want to note that you have BlackRock, the largest asset holder in the world, purchasing up 100 plus thousand units. I guess we could ask our question to ourselves: why? Why are they doing that? Are they preparing for something? The Van X, the State Streets, ARK Invest, they liquidated all their coin their uh, Coinbase shares, and now they're basically having their own Bitcoin ETF and they're preparing for it as well. So those are just some powerful fundamentals that are gonna be behind Bitcoin. Yes, John is absolutely right. On the technical side, you, a lot of times you'll see potentially a pullback on Bitcoin and then take off, but that may not necessarily be the case this go around because you have an immense amount of buying pressure coming from the institutional side and retail are going to pile in at the same time. So then from us noting this, we can then bring ourselves over to what's called the altcoin season index. So this is something interesting. So people would say, oh, well, Bob, we're super high on Solana. Do I think that it can go higher? Oh, well, the altcoin season says we're kind of like in the 50-50 zone. Well, I'll bring you over to the year and that's not necessarily the case. So you can look that the altcoin actually has much, much more room to grow. There's a graph for you to be able to look at and understand where the altcoin season actually is and you're still in the blue zone. So you still have a bunch of room to grow and then, okay, I like, how does this reference on a chart? Well, I'll bring you over to the others chart. This is basically Bitcoin and these top 10, it's all these coins below. So it's 11 and beyond. This is the reference to that. So Bitcoin has yet to have, and then you still have from this current moment, a 58% push for all altcoins 11 and below. And if we believe that Bitcoin is going to like, go to let's call it the 85, 90, 100K area, maybe even further because of institutional demand, then you don't necessarily have a reference of what you'll get for all coin season, but it will be most likely, it will most likely pass its all time highs if that's the case. But as far as some of the news, I wanna bring you guys over. I'm sorry if I'm gonna bombard you with this information, but this is exactly how my brain thinks and how I look at everything. So here is everything. John was talking about, I wanted to touch a little bit on Ethereum because everyone, like, let's say you're holding a bag of Ethereum. I want to touch on this and not go directly into Solana right away and shill you my Solana. But look at this. So you have a staggering numbers here. You have assets moving from Ethereum L1 to L2. You have Arbitrum coming in at 11.1 billion. You have Optimi Optimism right here, OP. 5.5 billion and a brand new chain 
Maybe it's something to keep your eyes at. $2.7 billion coming in, and that's built on top of the ETH chain. Base as well. They have had an 800% increase in, in, uh, in money flow on their chain, and that's also built on top of Ethereum. So they are going to be a competitor for Solana for sure, but Solana now, if you start diving into some of the other fundamentals, right? So we can look that Binance end up adding Solana to their Web3 wallets, right? What did this end up doing? Well, Sol flipped Binance. Okay, that, that is a very powerful fundamental. I kind of have been going over this with John since uh, December, and it has happened six times this year already. So you can see how much, how powerful Solana actually is. Then you can go over to here. This is why we are referencing the altcoin season index. Look at where Solana is pulling out based on its dominance. Cause each one, like when you go into altcoin, altcoin season, all this basically is saying is the, the smaller coins and their dominance to Bitcoin or dominance to Ethereum. Well, right now, when Solana actually passed its all-time highs, because this is Solana on itself, it passed its all-time high as far as market cap is concerned. It passed Ethereum and actually passed Bitcoin. So those are some powerful fundamentals that are going to sit behind Solana. And I'm going to tell you right now that institutionals are taking a look at this. They're going to look at this data. They're going to look at these charts and they're going to say, we need to make sure to have some form of allocation in this. So you will see institutionals come into play here. And then look at this, you have Google search interest hits highest point in its history for Solana worldwide. Again, even from previous bull runs, it's, it's breaking out. So people are actually searching for Solana. So then, so then the, the, the key is right. Everyone's like, oh, well, I want to make money at this. And can you give me some places that I can put my money in order to earn on this? Well, I do want to be able to go back and preface it to the gold rush where it's like picks and shovels. Sometimes people, okay, you're going to make more money with the pick and the shovel than you are going to actually try and snipe out one of these meme coins, get a 10,000 percenter, something of that nature. What we can do is we can look at the decentralized exchange volume. This is the actual trading that's going on inside the ecosystem. And funny thing to note is Solana this is built on top of Solana. This is built on top of Solana. And so is this. And it's out competing Uniswap, which is their number one decentralized exchange, which we saw John talking about earlier at a $9 billion evaluation. Jupiter sitting at whatever 1.8 with uh, almost 5x potential in it. This is going to be highly anticipated and people will also have their eyes on this, which you could, you could buy Orca, Ray, Jupiter. But I'm going to leave you guys with two at the end of the call, two different places that you can wait for uh, the projects to actually be released and anticipate them and make some good money on them and their earlier stage. So, but another thing to note, if you guys were looking at Arbitrum and why it was pulling back, this is why I constantly am looking at the fundamental side. So 76.62% of the circulating supply was released March. 16th. So two days ago. So if you saw that massive pullback, look at how much money was released on chain. What do you think people were doing with their money? They're taking profits. They're taking money off the table. So you're going to get a huge correction on that, but look at how much money was inflowed. So could you get a, could you get a pretty solid, uh, recovery on that? Uh, I would say highly likely you could see that because it is one of their top, um, chains built on top of Ethereum Arbitrum. But um, so I'm going to bring you guys actually over to some some uh, interesting things in the background. So we are talking about picks and shovels, right? So let's go to the stats. Let's go to the money. You want to see the money flow? Here it is. John and I, when we were first talking about this, they were doing $400 million every 24 hours. They're currently sitting at $2.8 billion every 24 hours, and they're going to be launching more products off of their their Jupiter, they have this thing called a launch pad and every project starts from zero, which we're going to get into two of those. We'll get into three projects, but this is a whopping number, right? We go over to Ray, Radium. This was 60 million when I was looking at it, total value locked. It's already sitting at 661 million. 
And then here's one of the ones that I have my eyes on and I will be looking out and I'm actually airdrop farming currently at the moment. It's Jupiter's sister company, Meteora. Look at them. They're smaller. It's an opportunity to be able to jump into this once they release their token, which I believe is going to be somewhere in April. April is going to be a big time for Solana because there's a lot of stuff being released. But um, this is a great opportunity to be able to get one of those smaller picks and shovels that you can be fetching value. Instead of you trading all these tokens, all these tokens are being traded on these networks. You fetch the fees and this company will consistently turn over profits. Therefore, you will turn over profits. So off of the launch pad, there's going to be this company called Zeus Network, and it's going to allow people to stake their Bitcoin on top of Solana which is that is another interesting fundamental and catalyst. We actually voted on that because we're part of the DAO for or decentralized autonomous organization. And that all it does is just going to consistently generate more fees because they constantly are launching new products. All right. So then we have that. We, we, and then the other token that I wanted to talk about was everyone is going over to BirdEye, right? Interesting. So what, what is this tool that we're using? This is such a neat product. You can connect your Web3 wallet. It overlays to this. It has a trading view chart. It has a watch list. What a beautiful piece of technology. This does not have a token yet. And the owner of Jupiter has already been in talks with him about making a token. So that's going to be something that we very much have our eyes on and we'll think that this company will do very well. And if you don't really like BirdEye, there's another company called Deck Screener. These are basically the only two companies that are doing this right now where you can click on any of these assets. Look, they all use all the different chains that you can trade on top of. Seabase is in here, Blast is in here, right? So this is one that we were just talking about earlier. But that is where we're going to be finding value so keep an eye on meteora keep an eye on bird eye for this to be released and keep an eye on zeus network it's going to be launched off of the jupiter launchpad if you guys want to look it up then i'm giving you three opportunities at something three things that don't exist yet technically they, they're not on chain but this right here, you know how we were talking about multipliers, right? So we were talking about, okay, you have a $9 billion evaluation. Then you have um, Jupiter at 1.8, you can get a 5X multiplier. Well, what we were going over with is like, let's say you go over to seal with hat. We go here, we take a look, we see this as a 7 million fully diluted market cap. We go back over to mock jupe. Let's do that. It has a 3.5. You can see it basically has a double in it to be able to be the size of seal with hat. And we think it's okay for people to add whatever, a thousand, two thousand dollar allocation to something like this that has a massive multiplier on it. And it happens to be Jupiter's meme coin. So if you're looking for a meme coin that has high upswing potentials, many of these meme coins now, like Bonk, let me just go show you their whopping numbers at a two billion dollar evaluation, which is crazy to see or to reference you have soul chat think about this you're talking about a meme coin which has very bare minimum amount of utility this one maybe not the case because they actually have a bot that they run and they burn their token when the bot is ran and they already did 100 million dollars in transactions but um just a reference two billion let's say you want to get in on chat which is going to have utility on the solana saga phone and the chapter two, which we own the Saga phone and the chapter two phone pre-order for 2025, you can see how much more of a multiplier it can go through. So let's say this goes to the same size as Bonk at 2 billion evaluation divided by 133, you would still see a 15 times multiplier on a face value of $14. So you could potentially see this if it went to the same size as Bonk. And it had utility for the 100,000 units that they sold on their phone. You could see this at potentially a $210. And that is, that is like a very, very bullish indicator. But these are the places where, yes, they're going to be very, very high risk. But this is where it's going to be very, very high reward at the same time. So maybe just having some form of allocation in your portfolio, maybe like a 70-30, you know, you hold a, a, a decent bag of Solana, some ETH, some Bitcoin, and then maybe have whatever, 10, 5% of your portfolio allocated to some of these plays, because again, they're going to go through some wicked multipliers. I ended up calling this at 82 cents. So you guys can see what kind of multiplier this is. 
up to this point is 1,878%. Up to the peak over here, 2,504%. So that's a 25 times multiplier. You put a grand in, it's worth 25,000. But I think that's a lot to cover. I'm sorry if I rave and rant, but I, this is just a lot of my data. I have so much more to be able to provide to everybody else. But if I'm gonna leave you off with one last thing and sorry about this, but okay. So when you're looking at these different chains, you know how we were talking about the picks and shovels. So this is what we were referencing. We're referencing, okay, what, what exchanges are, are making the transactions happen on chain, like Radium, Jupiter, Orcada. Like, let's say we go over to Dex Screener. This automatically gives you what those pools are. So let's say we go to Avalanche. Trader Joe, and then you can see the little symbol right here. This is the primary swap. So if you go and buy their token, that's probably a good token to hold. If you go over to, I don't know, let's say you operate on Binance Smart Chain, maybe holding some pancake swap or Uniswap would be intelligent because those are the picks and shovels for each chain, depending which one you are. Because I don't know, maybe you guys are invested in Near or some of you guys are very much into crypto and you're on Polygon or something. You can go and look at some of these other ones that might have higher potential um, upswings. But I think that's everything I got for them off the top of my head, what I have prepared for them today, John. Hey, I know it's a lot. Great crowd. No, it's it's a lot, but it's it's great information, obviously, because it's like, uh, we're still so early. You know, I saw actually a chart the other day that said that we just entered really the bull market uh, about two or three days ago. So uh, it's still the beginning. You know, we still haven't really seen um, some of the all-time highs been hit on a lot of alts and even previous layer twos on soul. So it's like, just be aware, guys, what's happening before the bull market is going to give you a little bit more of an insight of where liquidity is going. And if liquidity is going, is leaving Ethereum and going into Solana, so, there's yeah. a reason why. There is and then a check this out. I'll, I'll leave this too. So this right here, um, actually based on a percentage so this is interesting so if you go take this multiplier like you take 436 billion so 436 divided by let's call it 90 it sits at right now solana is still almost five times smaller but the most interesting part to me is that based on the 24-hour dex volume and the numbers they're putting out solana is taking up almost a third of all decentralized exchange volume and and you have to reference this right in that it's five times smaller but it's still taking up a third of the transaction volume so that says a lot about the weight of the chain and what is going on with the technology under the hood and then the last thing we could leave you off with is not only fundamentals that are coming into play here it's it also is in the context of like philosophy because they actually have a beautiful ecosystem a beautiful community thriving and everybody is like wholesome it's an open community where people are building on top of it and it's being built from within rather than the money coming from outside and and funneled in it's already had this thriving ecosystem so now the true colors of the chain are showing Yes, sir. But John, thank you for the time. I appreciate it very much to be able to come on here and, and uh, just provide value. Appreciate you too, bro. I mean, you just dropped a bunch of free value to everybody tuning in. Guys, I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned. We do have some more setups coming up, right? And stay in contact and we'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.